Hi guys, welcome back to my podcast, the Jada Bell Podcast. I have two very special guests. I'm so excited. How are you guys doing? Oh my gosh. Um, I'm going to let them introduce themselves, their podcast name, what their podcast is about, and why you guys decided to make your podcast before I go into my introduction. Go ahead. Well, I am Peach. I'm Chris. And we are the host of the To Be Better podcast. And how it started, it started as a joke. It really did. Yeah. This whole thing was a joke. Yeah. Oh, really? We we started making TikToks and got kind of popular because of our TikToks, and then somebody realized realized that we were together, and it exploded. Oh wow! Because we were, she was doing men advocate stuff, and I was doing re- well. I guess we kind of both were doing relationship yeah. stuff. Um, and when people realized we were together, they started asking for a podcast, and we had like wow. thirty or forty people like, "Hey, you should create a podcast," and we did. Oh, that's and amazing. we had a hundred thousand followers on YouTube in like six months. Yeah. Wow. So, I didn't even know that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. When did you guys start? December 17th of 2022. Okay, so not that yeah. long ago. It's been no. almost wow. two years, yeah. You guys are, like, famous right now. <laughs> really? Thank you. Oh my that, gosh. that makes me so uncomfortable. Same. It, it's a crazy concept to wrap your mind around. Mm. What is your, like, podcast really about? Communication. Though? Communication. Yeah. Oh, wow. How to be a better human being. Mm, I love that. Okay, well, I will get into my introduction of why. I've been wanting to sit down with you guys for so long. I emailed you, I've, and I'm just so grateful that you guys came in. And I'll kind of tell you guys why, because this is our first time even talking. So for anybody that's watching this, we have not just talked beforehand, just DM'd, right? So a little bit about me is that um, I was a hardcore feminist, liberal, Uh, left-winged, very much didn't believe in gender roles. Um, The union of marriage was more supposed to be a partnership to me. I married a man who was more masculine. He's not here today. He wanted to meet you guys and be here so bad, but (laughs) he's at work. But um, we were very unequally yoked. I also didn't even believe like in God. Like there was just a lot of challenges. And I went through a year-long separation from my husband after two years where I went in uh, to therapy and got some help, and I learned I had BPD. And I learned I had, um, well, they diagnosed me like paranoia, schizophrenia. I believe God is good because I don't feel like I have any of these symptoms anymore. Um, And I came across your video. And I was by myself. Me and my husband weren't together. um, And you were specifically, it was a video where you said, um, I submit to you in every aspect. Mm -hmm. And I take your shoes off when you get home from work. You said... um, I cook, I clean, and I call you yes, sir, and no, sir. And you were so happy. Like, you were genuinely so happy, and you guys were so in love. And I just watched that. I said, I want this. Like, I don't know how to be this woman. Like, I'm so conditioned through social media, through how I was raised, to not be like that in any way, that if I am submissive in any way to a man, I am going to be abused. I'm going to be hurt. Appear weak. Um, I'm weak, exactly. I'm less of value. Mm -hmm. And I went on a binge watching your guys' videos, and you guys were talking about BPD as well. And you were like, you can't make any excuses for how you treat your partner. There was one video where you said, you're you're kind of a terrible human being for treating your partner this way. And I was humbled. Like, thank you for how y'all speak. Thank you for being that vulnerable, being so raw. Um, There was one video, too, where you were talking to women who were um, attacking you in your comments for how you are. And you said, I forget that y'all don't have Jesus. And I said, who they're humbling me like <laughs> to my core. I was like, okay, I want, I want this. I, I, this is what I want. Like, I love my partner. My husband's an amazing man. I don't know why it didn't work, and I know it's something within myself. So I just fully focused on taking my own accountability, and I went to therapy and I got help and I, um, spent time with God. I read my word, my Bible. I don't know, you guys, is like relationship with God, but I've heard you guys talk it about is God. A relationship. Pray. It is. Yeah. So that's what I focused on, set of religion, relationship with God, and um, embodied the role of a wife. Really did. And my husband today, a year later, says he's with a completely different woman. So thank you, guys. I have to thank you. I wanted to sit down with you guys to thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't even think you guys realize that you guys are a huge, I don't know if I'm saying the word right, you guys contributed to what saved my marriage. So thank you That's so much. Awesome. Yes, yeah. and I had to say that in person. So now everybody knows that. If you guys have any comments, did that. you um with your schizophrenia was it audible or visual? Um, it was audible. I, heard. I have that too. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, and it's affected by my diet. 
So that was mine too. Yeah. I had to learn that I had to change. I changed my diet completely, and it helped it a lot. Yeah. And if I eat processed sugar, it comes back. Yep. Yeah. Isn't Man. that wild? Wild. Yeah. Wow. And I and I went to uh, DBT, dialectal behavioral therapy, to yep. learn communication. And you guys do talk about how to communicate yep. through mm-hmm. it. We talk about DBT quite a bit too. We do. Yeah. Oh, so you guys have to go watch their podcast. Oh, you guys have to go watch their podcast. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys are life changing. And 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 it going to therapy and doing that and then also watching his videos is what helps so much so yeah it was audible i wasn't seeing stuff but it was intense it's rough it's rough and you think that your partner is like the de- i thought my partner was like the devil i would just hear stuff and i was like you and i would go on full attack mode manipulation it was it was insane but mm-hmm. my diet i worked out lost 40 pounds um no processed sugar i make things raw try to make things as raw as possible um even dates if I like sugar. I literally just had like yeah. strawberries and bananas last yeah. night. Like no processed sugar. I'll tell my husband, I'm hearing stuff like, <laughs> you know, all <laughs> over again. So I had to share that with you guys um, before we get into questions. So why I wanted you guys on here too is, um, well, I, for my audience, um, I drop eBooks to help them. So I have one eBook called um, I'm the Prize Said Who, which is a wife's guide to eliminate the spirit of ego, because that was something I had to endure of like letting go of my pride. I I, I don't know how you guys feel about it. I just don't really believe in the wave of feminism today we at all. Oh, okay. I hate it. <laughs> yeah, I hate it. I hate it. I think it really altered the way I thought about marriage so much. And it made me so prideful. Like mm-hmm. it's a lot of pride that's involved in that movement of I'm not going to do X, Y, and Z, because you're not, you know, and, and so I wrote this guy, this ebook to help women to break free from that. And I just dropped my second ebook called How to Magnify the King and Your Husband. So communication on how to uplift him instead of um, keep attacking him for his weaknesses. So I wanted to start today's episode with you guys to kind of break down um, issues that people have, common issues that people have in marriage. Um, if I I do one day, hopefully, I mean, I don't mind coming to you guys, but love to talk more about DBT and like um, schizophrenia and all of that stuff. My goodness, that's a deep one, but I'm still learning. So, you yeah. know. Um, okay. So any comments before we get to the questions? I really appreciate you sharing that with us. Oh. It, it was really beautiful here and I got pretty emotional. Oh. So. Yeah, I thank you guys. I see that you get emotional with <laughs> stuff. I just love everything that you are. I just like every video I watch of your wife, your wonderful wife. Oh my gosh, it made me. I'm like, I need to be that. <laughs> my poor husband. <laughs> like she, he's you're he's blessed. Oh my gosh, you love your husband. You defend your husband. I saw that you know you call her a woman, and people mm-hmm. were being saying things in the comments, and she loves it. Yes, I'm oh, your woman. <laughs> one of the most honorable titles that I. I have oh, is being, being his, his woman. I love that. Yeah, mm-hmm. you guys are a blessing. So, um, and you're, I do believe God um, put your guys' video in front of my face during that time because, like, how random, right? And it was during 2022 where I went yeah. through this separation. So, when you it guys was when we were just this, starting, yeah, wow, yeah. My mom said that we had a ministry before we even had Took a off. podcast, yeah, yeah. Wow. Wow. So it all was perfect timing. Mm -hmm. So God definitely was like, this is who I want you guys Mm -hmm. to watch. And so thank you guys Mm -hmm. for your obedience, for following after that, no matter what the comments might say. It's hard. When you start winning, the devil comes out of the woodworks. And when he comes fierce. Yeah. So, but we've we've overcome. You know, it's just one of those things. You just got to stick to your guns. You know, if you tell God you're going to do something, you got to follow through with it. Yeah. And so. definitely lean on him. Mm, yeah. I've been getting attacked, too, because I just started. No, I believe it. Oh, I, I believe it. I just started. This is my fourth episode. I already have 4,000 followers on my um, podcast Instagram. A couple videos already ha- hit half a million. Getting attacked. Like, I oh, talked about... Like your husband is in this, in a way supposed to groom you. I broke kind of like the definition, like metaphorically, and then I went to the Bible and people were like, "Call me names for even saying that he's supposed to." Gro- well, you're getting groomed regardless. You're right. getting groomed by you're getting conditioned by your parents. You're getting con- conditioned and groomed by social media. So regardless, you are going to in fact intake um, what you're being ta- taught mm-hmm. by yeah. who you're with. And if you're going to be with the leader, he's going to groom you. He's going to to teach you, and you want to pick wisely. Right. And people are attacking me like for even using that word and it was like i was questioning myself too but i was like no i don't know yeah. we call it training yeah training and oh what are you a dog yeah so they'll always find something to pick apart yeah so that was my question is like what comments have you guys endured and how do you guys battle it you know she oh gets it way worse than i do i do and it, it's across the board i get called a pick me a gender traitor a slave um i get told that i am narcissistic 
How are you narcissistic for being serving? <laughs> because of my Love. face. When my husband speaks on the podcast, and I died, it's really hard for me to take in things audibly. Mm. So if you're speaking and I'm not paying attention to you and I'm looking at that plant, I'm hearing your voice, but it's just meh, 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 meh. Mm. So when I am listening to my husband speak, I'm looking at a table and my face is blank because I have to really focus. And because my face isn't smiley and happy and cheery and what they expect of the happy woman, oh. I am narcissistic. The limelight's not on me and I'm upset about it. Mm. Yeah, it is a constant barrage from all aspects. Wow. I get called a toolbox because of my piercings. Tackle box. Tackle box. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. I think you guys are so cool. It made me relate to you guys more. I, I, it's easier to listen to people that just look like people. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, that have that a story like to people. tell. Yes. Right. You guys talk like people. Like, listening to just pastors that are all giddy up all the time. Like, I didn't even turn into a Christian by listening to people like that. I listened right. to uh, this one man who has three baby mamas. But it was more interesting to listen to him talk because he has a story. He has, mm-hmm. a, he has depth to what he has to say instead of so preachy. Yeah. And it could come off judgmental. So I actually listened to you guys, like, well. I understood. And your guys' character and how you looked helped me intake it actually a whole lot better. Yeah. You should check out Tyler from Different Church. Thumbed on TikTok, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, they're good people. He's been on our podcast. They he's he's gotten tattooed while preaching a sermon. Really? Like he's he's he is one of us. That's just yeah. all there is to that. So uh, good people. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh well, thank you for that. Any other comments about the how you guys Oh gosh. My husband's been called a groomer. Oh yeah. He's been called abusive. Abusive. Like crazy. Oh my gosh. Narcissistic. Mm-hmm. We both get the narcissistic comment. Wow. Right. That's interesting. I how I was narcissistic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that doesn't make any sense. The problem is, is everyone has narcissism to a degree. It's a scale. There's a difference between having selfishness and having narcissistic personality yeah. disorder. If you, That's true. if your stomach growls and you feed yourself, that is you looking out for number one. Yeah. So by definition, that is a form of narcissism. Mm-hmm. So to a degree, everyone is narcissistic. Right. Everyone who looks out for self first. Mm. It's self-preservation. That's where narcissism comes from. And the more you understand what narcissism actually is, the less that word actually affects you and the more annoying it becomes when people use it mm. because they don't know what they're talking about. Right. So They overdo a lot of words today. Right. Oh, yeah. Deflecting, well, gaslighting, right. toxic masculine. I hate that one because oh, I think being too. masculine – is masculinity and then there's toxic people, right? right? We've, we've delved into that a lot too. We've also talked mm-hmm. on ego quite a bit. I heard you say earlier that, you know, you had to, to work on your ego that we have um, in the tattoo industry. I have shirts that say ego kills talent because you mm-hmm. can be a phenomenal artist that doesn't hone your craft and you're not going to get anywhere. But if you're a humble artist who works out over and over and over again and you don't let your ego take over, you can become very successful in the tattoo industry. Man. It's no different in a relationship. When you check your ego at the door and you start working as the relationship first and your happiness secondary, everything else falls into place because you're prioritizing the relationship. It's the two of you versus the problems versus the two of you versus each other. Mm-hmm. You have to remove your ego from that equation in order for that to work or you're just keeping score and fighting to fight. Right. So. Wow, that's good. Yeah, I, I do agree. Yeah, we're all a little bit self. Yeah, you're right, and they're in just overusing words mm-hmm. today. Mm. And ways that we have combated the onslaught of negativity. Granted, there is much more positivity that we get from our fans. We really do. It it is overwhelming, and we can feel the warmth and the love and the dedication from our fans. So I want to say that is definitely on our radar. When it comes to the negativity, we have adopted the mindset of the internet is an illusion. It is. Mm-hmm. We get stopped all the time in public of, oh, my gosh, I love you guys. You have changed our lives. We hear all of the positivity. Not once have we been stopped. And someone has said, you guys are disgusting. Mm -hmm. Gender traitor. You're such a slave to your man. Right. So everything that happens on the Internet, once you put the screen down, turn off your computer, it doesn't exist. Yeah, that's very true. Mm -hmm. Well, that's helpful. We've been stopped everywhere. Every time we've left our (laughs) hotel room, we've been stopped since we've been out here. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Stopped twice in the airport. Um, it's been, this has been a wild trip. Last time yeah. we were out here, we got stopped three times. Right. It has been every time we've left our hotel room. This is the first wow. time we didn't get it. And really? it's because we only hit the gas station and came in. Like, we didn't interact with anybody. We left our hotel at 8 o'clock in the morning. Everybody's still mm-hmm. sleeping from, you know, it's Vegas. That's me. You we guys stayed are at famous. the Venetian, so it's it's so famous, strange. as you guys should be. So strange. It and is. I and I really hope, and I want people that watch me, because I, I have, um, I gained a following, but I gained it for, like, the wrong reasons when I first started. You know, the social media, the Instagram I reached out to you guys. Um, that one was, the people that know me watched the whole transformation. They watched me post provocative photos and just use it for just 
just the lust, right? Mm -hmm. And then I went from that to finding God, posting my baptism, my marriage. And so people do follow me because they're like, oh, I see the transformation. And so what hit me watching you guys, I'm hoping they something that they hear from today's podcast, they're like, oh, I'm going to go and yeah. go learn from you guys. Yeah. So I'm excited to use my platform today to have you guys on here for sure. Yeah, we're trying to get to your level on, on Instagram. We're not yeah. there yet. You guys are have scored me on TikTok. Yeah. You know? I love it. <laughs> I'm scared of that place. I don't yeah. like TikTok. No, I st- it's it's <laughs> we, rough. We just got on Twitter last night. We did. Yeah, I'm trying to move away from Facebook. Mm-hmm. It's become, it's too much. So. Well, it's good you guys have each other. Yeah. yeah, that's amazing. All righty, let's get into questions today. So that was amazing. I'm so excited. Okay, so question first, um, going back to the viral boot clip video, um, were you always like that submissive or is it something that you had to grow into? I just need to know because I was not. <laughs> oh, I was not. I was raised in a single mother household and it was the mindset of, You cannot rely on a man. You only have yourself. You are so, so slick for not dropping that F-bomb. Oh, it was so hard for me. (laughs) Got to clean up the language a little bit. (laughs) Yeah. And I was that young woman who would declare in a relationship with a man, I would look him in the eyes and just remind him, just so you know, I don't need you. Mm -hmm. F all men. And that was me. <laughs> yes. Wow, that's good. And I was posting myself on the internet. I wanted attention. It validated me. It made me feel seen. I also grew up with the mindset that my value was based on what I could offer sexually to men. So it's so humbling. Listen, you guys <laughs> talk. Um it so it was it was very much I didn't work on myself growing as a human being. I wasn't working on my communication. I was working on how I can look sexier in the next photo. Mm. And, of course, with that mindset, posting the way that I posted, I would draw the kind of men who would seek that on the Internet. And then I would get upset. Well, you're looking at other women. What do you mean? Because I was one of the women they would look at. Oh, wow. And I met my husband. We came to a point where we recognized that what we had was more than just friendship and I also recognized that he was the kind of man who would not tolerate my bullshit. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. the moment it hit me, I was having a little mental breakdown in my apartment. And I was blowing up his phone. And he was responding, but it wasn't in the way that I wanted. And then I could recognize he was getting a little bit frustrated. Mm. Trying not to get emotional. That's no, okay. When it dawned on me that... If I were to say something accusatory or place blame just to have him chase me to make me feel wanted, I would 100% self-destruct, self-sabotage, and blow up what could be. And I had a little bit of a healing period from my previous relationship before I got with my husband where I had a full-blown mental breakdown. Um, I have shared custody of my children with their father. And they were at their dad's house that night, and I was in my living room. (laughs) I get baked. I smoke. And I had Rick and Morty on the TV, and I was just breaking down sobbing because I'm a single mom. My first marriage has failed. All of my relationships have failed. And it always boils down to I felt like I didn't matter and that I was a sexual object. And it also dawned on me that, that, well, that's how you're marketing yourself. Wow. That's how you're selling yourself to these men. And in the conversations with my husband now, during that time, he made me feel like I was more than that. Mm. And I've never felt that before. So it was an amalgamation of things coming together, like a star bursting, right? And suddenly, all I wanted to do was give love and nurture and caring versus the combativeness and the arguments and, well, if you really loved me, you would chase me. Mm. The first time I ever took off a man's boots was for him. Wow. And I will never forget it. It was in my apartment, and I was all about having different colored lights, and there were red lights on. I was trying to be, like, super seductive and pretty. (laughs) And I, I... kneeled down and I took his boots off and I looked up at him and just the way that he looked at me 
I never felt more beautiful. Mm. I never felt more loved isn't accurate. It's so much more deeper and in all encompassing, like a really warm hug. Mm. And that was the moment that I recognized, like, I could do this for the rest of my life. Wow. <laughs> that was beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for listening. <laughs> that was beautiful. I'm so, I need a second. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, Wow. Ooh, my goodness. I've never, like, no one's ever made me about to cry. Yeah. I'm usually a tough cookie. Uh.